Okay, so now we've removed dual booting. We've created an app component, which is now the root of our application. We've also kind of prepared things a little bit by um, adding in a modern toaster, which we can start using in the future. But what we're going to do in this step, and this is again a very, very large step, I'd say for you, for everybody, is to actually go through the process of adding routing back into our application. So again, look into our app root component. You can see we've kind of got this kind of UI view, UI SREF active, UI SREF. These are the UI routers or the Angular JS routing module. And they're not basically used in Angular, which is why when we look at the application, nothing's happening. Nothing's being displayed. It's not routing or injecting any components in the application. So now in this step, we need to basically migrate this whole thing over to using the Angular router. Now the very first thing, and this is something you'll always forget, <laughs> I always forget to do it, but the very first thing I recommend that you do is go back into your index.html file and make sure in your head you add base href. This is just needed in Angular to handle routing. So make sure you add the base href in to the index.html. Now, if you remember in our application, we had the app roots file, which handled the UI router configuration. Now we're not using UI router anymore. So we now need to start using the uh, Angular router. And again, in the app root component, you can see we're using UI SREF and UI SREF active and UI view. And we now need to start using the Angular routing directives. And then whenever we're using the upgraded components of UI router state and UI router state params, we now need to start using the Angular, the equivalent Angular services in our Angular application. Now I'm actually going to start this process by going into the app root component and changing all of these views and the SREFs and uh, actives over to what we would use in an Angular application. Let's do the easy ones to begin with. So the easy one is the UI SREF active is equal to active. And the Angular equivalent of this is router link active. So I'm basically going to just replace it with those. So I'm not going to go into any detail as to what this is and how it works. So you, you need to know this in order to migrate to AngularJS. But again, my completely free Angular course is available on codecraft.tv where I cover this completely. Now, the next thing I want to do is essentially replace the UI views. Okay, so UI views is where the different components were injected into. So if you again look into the app roots, so you can see in the state of list, the main UI view would have this template injected into it, and the main search view would have this template injected into it. So if you go back into the app root component, you can see we've got a UI view of search, and that's where one of those templates was injected into. And we've got a UI view of main, which is where the other one is injected into. Now, I think the best way to do this in Angular, well, the equivalent in Angular is called router outlet. Okay, but the best way to handle like kind of two router outlets in Angular is to have one, which is just the default one. So this main one is just replaced with router outlet, it doesn't have any of the parameters. This is our main default router outlet. But you can have a second one in Angular as well. So you can add a second one and you can give it a name. So I'm going to actually call this one not search, but header. So I'm going to give it a name of header because this is the router outlet that exists in the header. So essentially, the stuff that appears here, if you remember, there was a search component that appeared whenever we were searching, that would be injected into the header in the top here. And that is the router outlet here. Okay, so next thing we need to do is to basically replace these UI SREFs. There's a couple of other places we need to go and replace them, but let's replace them here for now. So the UI SREF here is list, and that actually relates essentially to the, the root URL of the application, so the absolute base URL, URL of the application, which, which basically is represented as router link with an empty string in an array being passed in. Now the next one is a little bit more complicated. You will have to kind of think things through with routing, but how to do this, the Angular routing is, is different to the Angular JS routing, okay? But one of the things 
that. But how to handle create in the create mode, if you remember when we clicked create, we never wanted to show the search. We just wanted to show the form in the center of the page, okay? So when we click the UI SREF create, we want to inject something in this router outlet, but in this router outlet, which is the header, we wanted to inject nothing. We want to make sure the search component is not injected in there. So you can do that with the router links by providing a little bit more information in the router link directive. So I can paste it in there. I'm going to close it out so you can see. So in the router link for this one for create, you can actually specify some outlets. And you can say in the primary outlet to so this one, oh, something's wrong. The syntax there is a little bit wrong. I forgot the, yeah, there we go. So you can see in the outlet, the primary, we want to specify it as create. So here, we're basically saying that the, what we're saying here is that essentially we want to have the path as create for the primary, which is going to essentially show the person create component here. But for the header, we're saying we want it to be null. We want nothing shown in the router outlet for header. Now the actual concept that we're talking about here, if you're gonna if you want to research this a little bit more, is called named router outlets. Named router outlets. So essentially, with one router link, you can target two different um, outlets on the page. It's pretty useful. And if you were using multiple UI views in an application in a UI router application, then you do need to be able to use this and understand this. Okay. So now I've created a router link there. So now let's essentially change the app routes from our UI router to our new Angular router. So I'm going to paste in the code to begin with. Again, we're not covering Angular in this course, so I do expect you to understand what this code is doing. This is standard Angular routing code. Well, slightly more than standard. I'm going to explain the extra stuff here. But it's pretty normal Angular routing code. So just to go through the routes that we've created, we've got the, the root root will redirect a list with this, this unusual syntax, and I'll explain that in a second. And it's got the list uh, path there, the search, the create, and the edit, and we're going to pass in the email. So you should remember this from the old UI router code. These are these, these are the essentially the same routes that we had previously. So if you hit the root without any other path, it's going to redirect you to list and it's going to pass a special syntax here. Now, what this syntax is saying is go to the list endpoint here, but as the header, in the header component, inject the search path. The search path is here, okay? And the search is essentially the search component. Basically saying we want to target the search component for the header outlet and the list component for the main outlet below. Then if you target create, then we'll just insert the person create component in that main router outlet, not the header one. And again, if you do edit email, it will insert the person edit component in that main one as well. Again, a little bit different. You will have to put on your thinking hat when you start migrating from UI router to Angular router. It's not a direct one-to-one -one match, but whatever you can do in UI router, you can do the same thing in Angular router. You just might have to think about it a little bit differently. Okay, so that's the routing. Now, in order to use your new routing, you need to provide it in your ng module. The first thing we need to do is make sure that we are importing the roots. Let me add it in here. So I'm going to import roots from our app.roots. And just to make sure, yep, here I was importing as well. Let's just get rid of it there for now. And we also need to import the router module. Now that's the module, the built-in Angular module, which lets us do uh, routing in Angular. So let's import that in. Again, I'm going to add it to all where all my other Angular modules are. So here it is router module here. And the syntax to import it in is we add it to our, our imports at the top. And I'm going to use hash-based routing. I recommend when you're migrating across initially just to use hash-based routing. It has far fewer issues, especially if you're trying to migrate parts of your application at a time, just stick to hash. Okay, the next things we need to do is basically go into our root. So now we're going to be injecting our new Angular components in our application. Let's make sure we're using the new Angular router 
in each of those. Now, I can't quite remember which ones are using the UI routers. I'm just going to go through them one at a time. So here we go, person edit component. Now we're using the UI router state params, UI router state. Let's now basically go through and, well, essentially we want to use the equivalents for those uh, for Angular. So for Angular, what this means is we need to use two services, two new Angular services. One of them is called activated root. And this gives us the details about, this essentially replaces state params. And the other one is router. And router lets us navigate between different uh, states with a, it essentially re re replaces state.go underneath there. Now we need to import those in at the top. So let's import those in here. Let's get rid of these updated provider. We don't need them anymore. Okay, so now we need to essentially replace this code here where we got the where we get the person, where we essentially get the email that's passed in and use it to get the person from the contacts and store that in this dot person. I'm just going to paste in the equivalent code for Angular. I'm going to keep the old one above just so you can compare it side by side. Here we go. So in Angular, we get the root, which is the activated root. We get the parameters. It's observable, so we subscribe to it. And whatever parameters are passed in via the URL, this callback will be called. And if it has an email, then we're going to call this contacts get person with the email parameter. And this essentially gives us the same functionality we had with the state params in AngularJS. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then here you can see this.state.go. We've got a list and a bunch of others. The equivalent of that in Angular is this.router.navigate. So we'll replace state with router and it's navigate. And then we need to pass it the root that we need to navigate to. So in this case, it's the root root. So the, the base root here. And the next one underneath, it's actually the gain, the same we want to, because we're updating or removing a contact. We want to do the same thing. We want to navigate back to the home page, essentially. So we'll navigate back to the base root there. Now let's person edit. We have to do similar things in person create. So let's go there as well. So person create, if you see here, we're using the UI router states. So let's replace that. In fact, let's just replace it there. So to do that, we don't need the activated route because all we're doing here is we're going to call router.navigate. So again, just like before, we'll do private. Um, we'll, add, we'll essentially add the router. And we're just going to replace this state.go underneath with the, again, once we create a contact, we basically just want to go back to the home page on router.navigate and the empty parameters. And I think that's all the places that we're using UI router uh, where we're upgrading and using UI router. So if I'm looking back into these other ones, no. And the spinner, of course, not the spinner as well. Okay, excellent. So that now means if I go to AJS Upgraded Providers, I can now delete both of these. I don't need these anymore. If I go to main.ts, you can see here, I can probably... So one final thing, let's just make sure and that we remove all that kind of downgrade logic from our components here. So let me get rid of that. And then go to the bottom. We don't need that anymore. And again, for the create, let's get rid of that there. Essentially, I want to make this into pure Angular uh, components, not being, you know, not used in either way. So we've done it with person edit, person list. Again, let's get rid of this. And then let's get rid of that. Search, uh, let's get rid of this. Now, again, you also might have been doing this as you've been going across, as you've been realizing that some things are only being used inside Angular components. I mean, I haven't been doing that. I've just been kind of leaving it in there. So now is kind of a good point to clean all of that up and get that working here. And now that's all been removed. The final thing is just to make sure we don't need to kind of include these in as an Angular, uh, Angular JS entities anymore. So let's just comment that out. And let's compile this. Look at the app. Let's take a look and let's just refresh. Let's take a look at the application, look at the console. Okay, we're getting another error. We're getting the injection to static injection error for the toaster. 
and uh, but that's what I'm going to fix in the next lecture.